I got all these new outfits now. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. On today's show, we have a rising star on YouTube who I'm meeting for the first time. His name is Dawson Watkins. His channel is Eat More Plants, and he is going to be making a creamy fettuccine Alfredo with a cashew parmesan and blackened oyster mushrooms without any oil. Please welcome Dawson to the show. I'm, it's so nice to meet you. Hello. How you doing? Chef AJ, nice to meet you as well. Well, I cannot wait to see you cook. I love your channel and I love what you're doing. And this recipe just sounds amazing. So whatever you prefer, Dawson, if you want to jump into the recipe or just tell our viewers who you are so that they'll follow you on YouTube and learn more from you. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just start with who I am. I am. I'm a Southern chef. I'm a vegan. I'm an artist. I, uh, I love to cook. I love to uh, eat. It's one of my favorite things ever. Uh, ever since I was a kid. Um, so a little background on me. I uh, went to the University of Oklahoma uh, for college. And then after that, uh, that's where I actually went vegan, which is actually kind of crazy because. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear. I always love to know, hear people's vegan journey, like when and why and how. Yeah. So like, I mean, as opposed to my peers, I was probably the only vegan I knew of in Oklahoma. Uh, so you know, it was a, it was a challenge going vegan at first, but you know, after about a couple months, you start getting the hang of it. You find alternatives, you feel better, you know, you, you lose weight and you know, eventually it pays off big time. So I'm really happy I did it, you know? Um, and after, so after the university of Oklahoma, I, uh, moved down, just graduated and everything. Got a job doing software sales, did that a couple years, and it was good. It was a good uh, stepping stone for me, but passion has always been cooking. So, you know, I love I love food. I was at the office working and making calls, and I'd just be thinking about lunch because, you know, that's all, food's always on my mind. So, uh, you know, started cooking, you know, every day as a hobby and really kind of took it more serious about three, four years ago. And then uh, from there, you know, basically try to make it a, turn my passion into a career. And that's what I'm in the, the phase of doing right now. Uh, you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm uh, Eat More Plants Official, YouTube, Eat More Plants, Facebook, Eat More Plants. So I'm just trying to build my brand and, uh, you know, inspire the world to go plant-based, go vegan, uh, you know, and hopefully provide some cooking inspiration along the way. But what inspired you to go vegan? What inspired me to go vegan? It was initially a friend that handed me a pamphlet. Uh, he was vegan at the time. Him and his girlfriend were vegan. They gave me a pamphlet. And I was like, uh, you know, I'll take a look. You know, I'm not making any promises and everything. At, at the time, you know, my mindset was maybe a little more closed. And then, uh, you know, I think I saw something else, uh, some documentaries after that. And then I remembered the pamphlet. And then, uh, you know, kind of made the connection essentially, uh, you know, with how our food gets to our plates, um, what our food does to our bodies. I started learning all that. Um, I learned about, you know, our number one rates of disease, um, you know, heart disease and cancer and then diabetes, diabetes and uh, how big of an epidemic it truly is. And, you know, from there, it was like a no brainer. I was like, I'm going to try this for a week at least, see what happens. A week turned into a, uh, now over five years. So uh, just had my five-year vegan anniversary, so to say, in uh, October of last year. So over five years now. And there's no turning back, man. I love this lifestyle. Uh, I eat so much more interesting food these days. I just eat like chicken and rice when I was back, like, 18 and 20, 18 through 21, I was just like eating the most boring stuff. Now I enjoy a variety, there's a variety of foods. Uh, you know, I, it introduced me to a lot of new dishes I've never tried before. Uh, I got into dishes from around the world. So I love to cook like Japanese, Chinese food, Korean food, Thai food, Cajun food, Southern food, comfort food, anything, you name it. You know what I mean? So. I'm very, uh, 
heavily inspired by, you know, uh, or basically I'm just, I love cooking dishes from around the world. My goal is to veganize every dish in the world. You know what I mean? So that is my goal. And then hopefully inspire others, show them that you can do everything plant-based, not sacrifice any flavor. So that is my, uh, that's my mission. Well, that's a great, that's a great idea. And that sounds like a great cookbook in the making. <laughs> Cookbooks on the way. Just wait. I'm telling you, I'm definitely doing a cookbook. Uh, I actually got an offer for a cookbook. I don't want to say who, but uh, yeah, last year I got an offer for a cookbook and uh, I decided to go a different direction, but uh, Eat More Plants is going to definitely release a cookbook in the near future. That's not, I can't wait. Awesome. Here, sorry, this microwave, I'm going to just turn it off so it doesn't make annoying noises. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. One of the things, what, what do you like to eat? Do you, you want to take uh, us through a, a day of, of eating for you? Yeah, absolutely. So day of eating for me, I love like soups. So every day I probably have one soup, uh, sometimes for breakfast. Uh, I don't really, I'm not like a huge fan of breakfast food. I love like savory, uh, lunch food, dinner food. So, uh, for breakfast, like yesterday, for example, I had a chickpea potato turmeric soup and put some cilantro in there, uh, you know, some scallion garlic, just uh, really simple, but so hearty and delicious. So I started my day with after that, um, you know, for lunch, let's see, it is always changing sandwiches, uh, pasta. same thing. I'm constantly eating a variety of different foods. Nice. Are, are you a big workout guy? I am. I actually was initially into fitness. Like in my early journey, I was into fitness and I was just eating tons of protein and tons of animal products. It made me feel terrible. And then, uh, you know, found veganism about the age of 20, 21. Uh, and you know, started changing over to, uh, you know, plant-based proteins like lentils, chickpeas, tofu, tempeh. Uh, but yeah, love working out. I love riding the bike. I love hiking. I love sports. I will play soccer with anyone. I play football, basketball. Uh, I love to swim. So I, lo I love being active, absolutely. Nice. So there's a question, the pamphlet that inspired you to go vegan. Amy says, do, do you remember what it was or who, who wrote it? Do you still have it? I don't. I don't. Um, unfortunately, I, I tell you what, what really solidified it for me was the documentaries because there's such good information and it's, and it's easily available on the internet or Netflix. You can just type in, you know, uh, there's what the health there's, and there's earthlings there's um uh, trying to think of all of them right now food choices uh you know conspiracy so there's tons of vegan documentaries out there that really i ended up going i watched one then it led to two and then i watched them all so nice do you think it's more of a struggle going vegan when you're when you're a good old southern boy <laughs> i mean if i can do it you can do it you know what i'm saying so I mean, look, it's as hard as you want to make it. You can keep veganism so simple and just eat, you know, beans and lentils and rice and whole foods, potatoes, and, uh, you know, really keep it simple or you can make it more complex. And on my channel, I always show people like a variety of different dishes. Some are simple, some are complex. So, you know, it's, it really is however you want to make it. Absolutely. Nice. So where'd you get the inspiration for today's recipe? Today's recipe, I just love this recipe. Sometimes I make it uh, not oil free, um, but today I have a completely oil free version and just made some simple changes to do that. You know, you remove the plant based butter and you do veg stock instead. So uh, simple changes like that. One second, I'm going to drain this pasta and I'll be right back. It'll take me just a second. Yeah. Take your time. So guys, I went to Costco yesterday and they have 
spaghetti squash pasta, like already done for you. And it's like 30 calories. I meant to get the box. I can't wait to try it. It's because it's like, oh, wow. it's like easier than doing it yourself. So that was pretty cool. That was my great find yesterday. Now they have the hearts of palm pasta. So those are really good options if you don't want to use, you know, the ones that are made of wheat or, you know, grain or beans. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Costco yeah. is like, I love Costco. This is like one of my favorite grocery stores. So there's so many good items in there. Definitely. When did you start your channel? How long have you been a YouTuber? Oh, um, I mean, so officially I started my channel. I think it says on there like uh, 2015, but I just had like a channel with no videos for like four years or something. I really started this channel. I think it was about a year and a half. We're approaching like a year and a half now. So yeah, you look really young on the opening video. You don't have a beard. <laughs> Definitely I mean, look not, not that you look old now, but I'm, I'm going to put a link to your channel right now. So people can. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Yeah, I um, I definitely look younger in my earlier videos, and if you stumble across my earlier videos, I did not know what I was doing, so please, I apologize for that. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know how to talk to a camera or anything like that. I just picked it up one day. I was like, we're just gonna start this. So that's kind of how I jumped into it. Now I feel like I'm starting to get them, you know, get more of a hang of things, and you know, uh, working on my camera skills and all that kind of thing. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What did you study in college? In college, I studied economics. So uh, yeah, I, I studied economics. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in college. And I figured that kind of kept a, uh, you know, a wide net of things I could do with that. So ended up studying economics. Um, and then after college, I ended up doing software sales and uh, didn't really use my economics background that much. But hey, uh, now I'm doing cooking and doing what I love. So nice. And were you able to influence any of your friends or family members to go vegan after you went vegan? Definitely. Yeah. Um, so my dad actually had um, some health issues. Uh, two years ago, he had uh, high PSA levels, which is, you know, it's a sign. It's one of the signs of prostate cancer. And we didn't get diagnosed or anything like that. But we did notice the high PSA levels. And um, so the doctor prescribed him some medication um, and it, it wasn't uh, lowering his PSA levels. And so uh, essentially I kind of looked up uh, the most up-to-date research I could you know, uh, in, in the nutritional literature to, you know, I wanted to lower his PSA levels and, and hopefully inspire him to make simple diet and lifestyle changes that could, you know, speed up that process. So he ended up, you know, after some conversations with me and uh, I, I cooked for him for like a whole week and just showed him things to eat and, uh, you know, simple recipes that he could stick to that tasted really good. And he eventually went, he tried going vegan. And uh, now since then, he's been almost 100% vegan. I, I can't confirm he's like perfect, but I know he's like, you know, definitely almost 100 percent plant-based so and since then after two years his psa levels have gone down um and yeah we got you know he kind of uh fixed the issues that that were happening and he really he thinks it's the diet so and i think so too because you are what you eat and you know if you change your foods over to foods that are healing and full of phytonutrients and vitamins minerals i mean it can make some serious changes in your body so yeah well dean ornish did a lot of research on that so it's true absolutely absolutely um yeah so really proud of my dad for that and uh yeah since then he's been plant-based and you know friends i've definitely inspired a lot of friends to try veganism and at least eat more plant-based a lot of them have gone vegan some have gone more plant-based um, so yeah, and coworkers even. So, um, I've had people just be like, I'm going to try going vegan. Like they were telling me that at the office, cause they see my Instagram or whatever. And they're like, I want to eat like that. So absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm looking at your YouTube channel and just got all these different recipes from all over the world, chorizo, Italian, 
uh, you know, Mexican yeah. fish, not, you know, not real fish, but fried fish. I, you know, I think, I think the way I found you was that how to cook copycat Panda Express Kung Pao. And I was really interested in that. And I asked you if you could do it oil free. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. That one I could do oil free. Um, not today, unfortunately I'm doing recipe, but yeah, I can absolutely do that one oil free. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, what I do when I, my approach, my approach to oil free cooking is to do it the way, you know, a restaurant might typically make the dish and just make simple changes. So if they're using butter or they're using oil, let's change that over to veg stock. We don't need the butter and oil in there. And if it's, you know, coconut cream, uh, or something really rich that's high, high in saturated fat, maybe we can move that over to like a nut based cream or, uh, some people like soy based cream. Uh, so right here, I have cashew cream and, you know, it's just made with cashews and, uh, and it adds that creaminess. You don't sacrifice any flavor and you keep it oil free, keep it whole food plant based. So. Great. So are you going to show how to make the cashew cream or is it already made? So the cashew cream, I went ahead and already made it uh, really simple. Um, you just blend cashews with veg stock. That's all I did. Uh, I soaked the cashews in the veg stock overnight and I put it in the fridge. I actually just left it in my blender. You could put it in a smaller container if you want, but I just leave it in the blender to not mess up another container. And then the next day I just hit blend. I have a high power blender. So I highly recommend one of those best investment I ever made. Uh, but if you don't have a higher power blender, it's all good. Just use what you got. And uh, yeah, you just blend the cashews with the veg stock. So um, right here, I have one cup of cashews. If you want it extra creamy, you could do one and one fourth cup of cashews. Um, and then I have one and a half cups of veg stock here. And so I was, and then right here, so the recipe you'll see is two cups of veg stock. So I half cup of veg stock right here but yeah i think there's a good segue here you want to just get right into this yep let's do it all right sounds good so uh let's see if i can lower this you guys can see the ingredients here there we go so right here we got some scallions right here fresh parsley right here we got some veg stock right here we got some beautiful lemons Right here, we got some garlic in the back. I got some Parmesan right here, cashew Parmesan. I did make this ahead of time just to save time and uh, make this easier to follow. Uh, but the recipe, uh, Chef AJ has it. It'll probably be in the description. And uh, yeah, so basically this is just cashews, Brazil nuts, garlic powder, salt, uh, and nutritional yeast blended in a food processor very well. And, you know, if you don't have Brazil nuts and you only got cashews, just use what you got. You know what I mean? So Brazil nuts might be a little harder to find. So if you don't have the Brazil nuts, just, just use whatever you have. Um, and then right here, I got some Cajun. Here, let me, uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right here, I got some Cajun seasoning. This is that slap your mama. Uh, I like this Cajun seasoning. It does have some salt in it, so I use it very lightly. Um, it is oil free right here. We got one of my favorite seasonings, the magic, what is this? <laughs> magic blackened redfish seasoning, but it's not, there's no fish in this. It's hundred percent just salt, spices, paprika, garlic, and onion, but it is a great blackening seasoning. I got that at Walmart uh, right here. Oh, let's see if we can see that there. Yeah, we got some uh, cashew cream. Uh, like I said, just blended. I soaked the cashews overnight, so. They're a little more smooth, makes that sauce nice and rich and creamy. And yeah, ingredients are all ready to go. Pasta is all ready to go here. So, Amber wants to know what kind of veg stock do you use? Do you use a commercial one or do you make your own? So if I have made my own, I absolutely use the homemade version. But if you don't have that, no worries. You can use any oil-free veg stock. Um, really good ones at... Uh, Central Market, they have a really good one. Um, but yeah, any veg stock will work. I would avoid anyone's work in them just because it will throw off the color of the sauce. Um, unless you don't care about that, turmeric's really healthy. So, you know, it's up to you. But uh, over here to 
my stove. So bear with me real quick while I move this camera. And what we're going to do is make our Alfredo sauce. All right. Just one second here, guys. All Take right. Time. So we got a pan right here. Let me get y'all a little closer here. Show y'all what's going on. Okay. Can you see that all right? Perfect. Yes. Looks like a brand new pan. Yeah, I actually just cleaned this with some steel wool and baking soda. It'll take anything off your pan, make it look brand new. That's a little tip for you right there. <laughs> but uh, all right, so we got a pan. I'll just turn this to medium heat. I'm going to let this heat up. And uh, let me just grab my ingredients over here so we're ready to go. So Chef AJ, can you yep. hear me? I'm right here. I can still hear you. All right. What got you into veganism? Oh, I the love of animals in 1977, September 1st. It was my first day at University of Pennsylvania. I was studying to be a veterinarian. And I had to work for a vet because I was on scholarship and he wanted me to cut off the heads of all these salamanders in the tank. And I cut one head off and that was it. I was like, I'm not doing anything like this again. And that oh was God. it. So I became a vegetarian instead of a veterinarian. <laughs> and awesome. that was, that was uh, 43 and a half years ago. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Longer than you've been alive. You know, I'm the, I'm the OG. I'm one of them anyway. So yeah. hundred percent chef AJ, you are one of the true OG. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I definitely share your love of animals. We're animal lovers to the core. Uh, you know, I grew up with dogs in the house. Uh, you know, my girlfriend, she's a cat lover, uh, but we love all animals. Yeah. I forgot to mention that on my uh, vegan journey. Uh, basically, it, you know, it started with, uh, for me, started with the I guess the, the, or what was it? The first documentary I saw was earthlings. So started with the animals. It led to the environment. It's all three. That's why you go vegan is because yeah. it's all three. Yeah. That's, I call that the trifecta. I can't imagine anyone watching forks over knives, earthlings and, and conspiracy and then thinking it's okay to eat animals. It's insane. It really is. It's like, you really have to uh, numb your empathy to do that. I feel like. Yeah. So. And now Game Changers is another one we can add to the list. 100%. Forgot to mention Game Ch Changers. Shout out to James Wilkes. Did an excellent job on that doc documentary. He also went on Joe Rogan and absolutely crushed it. He made, uh, let's just say, made meat eaters kind of face the facts. Let me say that. But yeah, shout out James Wilkes for that one. That was awesome. All right, looks like our pan is hot here. So I'm gonna just crank this down here so you can see what's going on. And what we're gonna do is, so for oil-free cooking, uh, you know, what I like to do is, is just start with the aromatics. So aromatics is just a fancy word for like garlic, scallions, onions, just the flavor packed foods. And uh, I don't add any water to start. So it's gonna stick to the pan initially. But what it will do is kind of start caramelizing and I'll just show you what's going on here. So first thing, we're going in with some scallions right in the pan with it. And I'm not shy on the aromatics here. So I use a lot of scallion and garlic because I love it. You know, you can adjust to your own taste preferences. First, we're going in with the scallions. Let's I don't know how people steak. cook without onion. That's got to be so hard. Oh, it's a, never do it. I just love onion, garlic, scallions, shallots, everything. I love leeks. All right. Those scallions are starting to sweat and trying to, they're kind of turning translucent here. So, I'm going in with my minced garlic here, y'all. Right in with it. And some people make the mistake of not mincing their garlic enough. You got to mince your garlic enough so that it releases its flavor. 
because if it's like roughly chopped garlic, it's not gonna it's not gonna release near the amount of flavor that it should. Okay, you can kind of see I don't even have a nonstick pan, so right here is just a stainless steel pan, and you can see it kind of sticks to the bottom here, but it's all good. Don't worry. We're just cooking it, releasing the the essential oils in the garlic and scallion, releasing its flavor. And what we're going to do here is just deglaze this pan with some beautiful veg stock here. Going right in with this. Scrape the bottom of this pan. Get all the flavor off the bottom of that pan, y'all. All right. Then going in with our cashew cream here. Right in with it, y'all. Beautiful cashew cream. Right in with this. Mix this in. And this right here, you already know that this is going to be packed with flavor. 100%. Let all those flavors get to know each other in there. Let that scallion get to know that garlic. Let that garlic get to know those cashews. And we're just going to bring this up to a boil here. Y'all with me? Right there. Yep. All right. Guys, got any questions for Dawson? Just type them in the chat. If y'all got questions, you just let me know. You ever run into Rip Esselstyn in Austin? I have not yet. I have not. Um, but if if Rip wants to collaborate or something, just let me know, man. I'm here in Austin. I'm local, and I'm happy to. All right. Do you shop? Do you shop at the big Whole Foods in Austin? Um, I go to Whole Foods for certain things. I find it to be a bit expensive, but um, I do go there for certain products, specialty products. And, you know, some things, you know, aren't too expensive there. So that's great. And um, all right, I'm going to lower my heat. This is boiling. Um, so I'm going to lower my heat down to low here, y'all. And uh, I, I love Central Market, um, HEB. I even shop at Walmart a lot. Um, I go to the Asian supermarket a ton. I love the Asian supermarket. Yeah, I like ethnic markets. You get a lot of cool things at lower prices. 100%. So mushrooms. Today, I'm using oyster mushrooms. You can find them at the supermarket for a lot cheaper, y'all. So if, uh, you know, you don't want to spend the money at the specialty stores where they're like $20 a pound and you'd rather just get them a package for like $3, highly recommend the Asian supermarket. And is the most convenient and some and some people you know don't have the same access to ingredients that i do so i'm grateful for that that i do have those in my area but all right and if your pan gets dry here you can go with a little more veg stock and what we're going to do is season this so We've already done the, the scallions and garlic and infused that into the cashew cream. Now, going in with some salt. And got some fresh ground black pepper here going in. Also, totally optional here. I got some nutmeg, and I actually forgot to include this in the recipe I sent you, Chef AJ. Sorry about that. But it's an optional ingredient, just a pinch of nutmeg. And I just do that. It goes nice in, uh, you know, creamy sauces. Add some nice flavors, so. Do you, do, you buy, do you buy nutmeg or do you grind it yourself? I buy it. Uh, I don't grind it myself. Uh, I just don't have the time for that. <laughs> but
but yeah, no, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's see here. So next up, we got some lemon going in, and this lemon is going to add some to the, you know, the uh, cashew cream, the fattiness, and then it's also it'll kind of uh, mask that sweeter cashew flavor as well. And I'm dropping a few seeds in there, y'all. I apologize. There we go. No seeds. Mix this in. Let me ask you, Chef AJ, do you use a nonstick pan? I do. A lot of people criticize me for it, but I've been using it for years and I haven't had any problems. I think if, if the nonstick pan isn't well made and if it's got nicks in it, you wouldn't want to use it. You know, I tried right. to use the waterless cookware and I have it, but I just it's I just don't get it. Yeah, I need I need one because things stick to the stainless steel and it, it can make, you know, oil free cooking harder sometimes. Like today we made some oil free arepas, which is like a Colombian, uh, you know, bread. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a corn based um, food, Colombian food. And uh, yeah, so, you know, having a nonstick pan for something like that is definitely definitely useful so i was just curious there yeah uh, i just heard of arepas the first time because uh the campbells have these new uh foods that, that you just add a little bit of ingredients to and that was one of them and that that that's oil free so that's i never heard that word before a few days oh, ago really? yeah <laughs> they're delicious i highly recommend they're so good all right let me show y'all i'm still on camera here y'all sorry it's been on the pan the whole time but i'm still here with you we can hear you, even when we can't see you. We got some beautiful fettuccine pasta. Made this off camera, but you, you guys just cook this according to the package instructions. And we're going right in with this. Put this camera down. There we go. Right in with this, y'all. And then, you know, you guys can use like spaghetti pasta if you want. I use it with spaghetti sometimes. It's absolutely delicious. But today we're making fettuccine alfredo, so I'm using the fettuccine. It looks just like real fettuccine from an Italian restaurant. It looks rich like it has cream and cheese in it. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm all about. I really, I do restaurant style cooking is like, that's my brand. I really like doing things properly, doing things authentic. Um, and yeah, I try to do it, you know, like the restaurants do, because that's where those are the most flavorful district dishes. And then, you know, adjust to your dietary preferences. So I have a lot of uh, recipes on my page. You'll see there's fried stuff. There's stuff that's not oil free. But a lot of my recipes, you can, uh, you know, make this simple change of change it from oil or butter to veg stock. So you can adjust to make a lot of my recipes oil free. And in the new year, I'm sorry, it is the new year, but this year I'm going to do a lot more oil-free recipes. Uh, so those are on the way, 100%. All right, y'all. Beautiful pasta here. This is all done. Let's get this out of the pan here. Take y'all with me. All right. Now, sorry. I'm... Bear with me, y'all. So how, did you make the blackened mushrooms yet? No, I actually do those separately. Great. Do you ever use an air fryer? That looks amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, I don't use an air fryer um, for the mushrooms today, but I do use an air fryer all the time, all the time. What about a Instant Pot? Do you use an Instant Pot? 100%. Instant Pot is... One of my favorites for like a uh, for making rice, making beans, making lentils. It saves me time. It's easy to clean. I love the instant pot. I even make hot pot in my instant pot sometimes. You can make uh, oil free hot pot. So, um, you know, it, I'll show that one of these days. But yeah, it's so good. Love the instant pot. So right here, we got the finished fettuccine and our beautiful homemade cashew-based Alfredo sauce. One second here. That, 
looks amazing, doesn't it, guys? I would probably use the um, the zoodles. Oh yeah, you could substitute any noodles, brown rice noodles, zoodles. Um, you know, uh, you were mentioning spaghetti squash noodles earlier. Anything you want, y'all. But okay, so right here we got our homemade cashew parmesan, and what we're gonna do here, we're going right over the top with it. Give this a nice dust here. Beautiful cashew parmesan. Don't be shy with the parmesan now, y'all. Get it right on there. All right. We also got some parsley going over the top here. And that is your finished fettuccine alfredo. Now, we're going to take this to the next level. So, right over here. And we'll get right in to some mushrooms here. Blackened mushrooms. Where do you get your inspiration for, for your recipes? My inspiration, what I do is, so say, let's say I want to cook Thai food. I, I will like watch every video on YouTube there is, uh, you know, with Thai food. I'll study, I'll watch documentaries, I'll watch videos, I'll go look on people's blogs, uh, you know, see if I can find like videos of restaurants cooking it, you know, things like this. So I can learn the proper techniques, the proper way, and actually have the tools to develop my own recipe. Rather than some people just go to people's recipes and they basically just like change a few ingredients and they're like, it's mine now, but you know, Anyway, so I try to learn the culture, how they cook. Um, you know, like, for example, Indian food. They use um, tons of onions, chilies, garlic, ginger paste. They use a lot of tomatoes. So that is like your, your basis of Indian food. And the, their spices are, you know, uh, garam masala, turmeric, red chili powder, uh, coriander powder and cumin powder and cumin seeds and fenugreek leaves and things like this. So this is like the ingredients that are like the foundations of Indian cooking. And so that's how I start my approach to learning Indian cooking is like I learn as much as I can about it. And then, you know, Italian food, it's a lot more simple. They don't, they don't use so many aromatics. It might just be some garlic, some onion, some fresh parsley, you know what I mean? So every culture across the world has a different style of cooking and they're all amazing. Like they've all perfected their craft. Different chefs there have elevated the cooking. So it's amazing. And do you have a, do you have a favorite type or is all just like all global cuisine? That's a great question. I will say, um, I'll say I have definitely a favorite type. I love Mediterranean food so much. Indian food and let's see, love Vietnamese food, y'all. Vietnamese food is amazing. Uh, pho, I have an oil-free pho recipe. Incredible. Uh, let's see. Um, I love that you eat savory breakfast. That's really cool. Every now and then I want sweet, but yeah, a lot of times I'm craving savory in the morning. And then I have like every day I eat fruit at some point, like uh, probably like four to six pieces of fruit, dates, bananas, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, uh, you know, anything, uh, oranges, grapefruit, lemon, lime. I eat a lot of citrus. My drinks, I make my own uh, limeade, lemonade. I sweeten it with maple syrup. Uh, you could sweeten it with whatever sweetener you want that works best for you. I find maple syrup works best with my body. Uh, when I eat sugar, it wreaks havoc on my body, like cane sugar or something like that. What do you think about sugar, Chef AJ? Oh, I'm not a fan <laughs> for many, many reasons. It's it's uh, may not be as calorically dense as oil, but for people wanting to lose weight or overcome addictions, I think it's 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 a trap. It's a trap. Hey, Lisa wants to know if you have other favorite Southern dishes that you've converted to vegan. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Chicken fried steak. It's obviously not real chicken. You know what I mean? It's all vegan. Uh, I do Southern fried chicken. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to do uh, a 
uh, you know, biscuits and gravy. Uh, what else have I done that's Southern? Um, let's see, mac and cheese. Uh, we love that in the South. We love uh, candied sweet potatoes. So if you uh, my Thanksgiving feast, I cooked a lot of Southern dishes because it's a Southern Thanksgiving. You know, we, we don't we don't take Thanksgiving light. And, and as far as Thanksgiving goes, I don't necessarily celebrate like what happened in the past. You know what I'm saying? It's more I just celebrate what I'm thankful for, friends and family, be grateful, enjoy, you know, good times with good people, good food. You know what I mean? So so you're, you you cook for a lot of your friends and family. I do. Yes. Um, all the time. So anytime. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Has there ever been a dish you so far haven't been able to veganize? Uh, so far, no. I can vegan veganize any dish. That is what I'm here for. Like, I truly think that's my purpose. I've been given a gift where I, I don't have boundaries when it comes to veganizing any dish. I'll do it. Like, I'll find a way. So, uh, yeah. And sorry, what was the question you asked before that? Um, what, 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 were your, what was your favorite type of cuisine and have, has there been something you haven't yet been able to veganize? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my favorite cuisine always changes. I told y'all Indian, Vietnamese, Italian, uh, Mediterranean, like, and uh, Mediterranean slash Middle Eastern, like hummus, tabbouleh, uh, tahini sauce, you know, all that stuff. Love that. And that, that cooking is amazing to make oil free. It's very easy. Um, and very healthy as well. So, all right. So next step here, we're going to heat up our pan and what I'm going to do is grab my mushrooms here. Any special kind of mushrooms you're using? Yes. Yeah, so the mushrooms I'm using, are oyster mushrooms and there are no i get this question all the time oh you eat oysters and i'm like no y'all this is an oyster mushroom right here okay this is uh a delicious mushroom it's really uh interesting like its texture is very meaty highly recommend this as a meat substitute uh or you know from more processed vegan protein choices you could just use mushrooms he's into we have steak night with these, like a cluster of oyster mushrooms. Uh, so when I say steak night, it's vegan steak. But uh, you know, we'll 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 grill these, marinate them just like you would a steak. Serve them with a loaded baked potato and uh, you know some vegetables. And they're so versatile. I make these into um, you know so many different things. So highly recommend these. They're incredible. Um, so what I'm going to do here, is just pull these apart and our pan is hot here. So they come together like this. So it, sometimes they're already chopped up for you, but, uh, these are in a cluster here. And so you just rip them apart, get them in the pan. And what we're going to do with these is I'm going to cook these in a kind of like Cajun Creole sort of style. Um, so what I'm going to do is blacken these and usually blackening, they use some oil and butter. I'm not using any of that today. So put the mushrooms in the pan dry. All right. And let these cook up. Then we're going in with our Cajun seasoning and you can use any Cajun seasoning. I'm using slap your mama, but you can use any Cajun seasoning. So salt to taste, and then, or I'm sorry, season to taste with this. Blackening seasoning. Can you see that, Chef AJ? I'm sorry. I don't want to mm -hmm. I can't. Those mushrooms are incredible. I've never seen ones th those big. Oh, that yeah. Big. These are some pretty big ones. Sometimes you might find smaller ones at the supermarket, and that's all good. They all work. But uh, if you can, try to find a cluster of them, and, uh, yeah, the most fresh tasting. So right here, we got the blackening seasoning. I'm going in with some of this. All right. 
देख Once these have, uh, I just I gotta down a little bit before we add some veg stock. And you know what, Chef AJ? After this uh, video, I'll go ahead and email you an updated recipe. I think I was uh, not like a hundred percent accurate with all the ingredients, so I'll get that to you ASAP. All right, thank you. Marcy says, "How do you clean those mushrooms? Do you run water over them?" Mushrooms, I would not recommend. Uh, oh, excuse me. So mushrooms, I would not recommend running water over them. I would much prefer to get a damp kitchen towel or paper towel. You just wet it with some water. And uh, so right here. And then you just wipe down the mushrooms rather than washing them under the sink. And I'm going in with some veg stock here. And this is going to deglaze this pan as well as soften up these mushrooms. So yes, I would recommend uh, getting a kitchen towel or a paper towel, dampen it, scrub your mushrooms down, remove all the dirt, and then start slicing or cooking your mushrooms. Whoops. And there's a question, how do you store your mushrooms and keep them from spoiling? Uh, so to store mushrooms, they, they need to be refrigerated. Um, and you want them in an airtight container um so or a sealed bag that they might be you know bought with um but yeah that's how you store them you don't want to leave them out of the fridge they're going to go like yellow and kind of they're a fungus so they might they go yellow and brown uh, when they go bad so that is safe storage practices for mushrooms y'all see they're coming together here look at that it smells absolutely incredible in here chef aj i'm telling you I know you're such a tease. <laughs> so real quick, y'all see the mushrooms here? I'm just going to hit these with some fresh lemon juice here. Okay. Add a little bit of acidity and some lemon flavor. Then a little bit of fresh parsley right here, all right? Going in with that. And I'm gonna do a little more blackening seasoning. You guys, season to your liking. So I know some people don't like preferences. So you guys season to your liking. All right. So camera back on the food here. This is your finished blackened oyster mushrooms. No oil, tons of flavor, y'all. You're gonna love these. Now, I'll take y'all back over here. I appreciate y'all bearing with me. I'm kind of moving around a lot in the kitchen. That's how I cook. So, all right. Got our beautiful fettuccine Alfredo here. Okay. And that, that's incredible. Now, would that be would that be one serving for you? <laughs> for me, absolutely. That's one serving. It's eat more plants, not eat less plants. You know what I mean? Like, I like to eat, y'all. I like to eat. So, all right, we got the uh, all finished here. What I like to do is I just take these mushrooms and go right over the top with it. All right. Stack them tall. And basically these mushrooms, you know, like our protein source today, or if you will. So stack those tall. Then garnish these. That is just mind-blowingly delicious looking. Oh, thank you so much, Chef AJ. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, I can't wait to taste it for y'all real quick. So right here, I'm just gonna garnish with some lemon, make it look nice, and also some fresh parsley right over the top. Have you ever thought of opening a restaurant? Because you cook like a restaurant chef. <laughs> I have, I get that question a lot actually. Uh, you know, let me get some better lighting for you. And you're basically self-taught, right? I am, yes ma'am, I am self-taught. Um, 
you know, cooking is my passion. I absolutely love it. Um, like I want to make it my career. Um, you know, I'm trying to and self-taught. Um, I grew up watching a lot of Food Network uh, with my mom. I like we used to watch like Rachel Ray, Paula Dean, and all that. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with them. But, of course. Uh, well, why don't you apply to be on one of the competition shows? I, you know, I haven't yet. It's still not out of the cards. I might still do that. I might have to do that. So, I mean, that would be amazing because you're very talented. I mean, I, I mean, if it tastes half as good as it looks, it's like <laughs> going to be amazing. I, I appreciate. It. Maybe, maybe take a, maybe take a picture of it and send it to me. We can use it as the thumbnail. All right, that sounds good. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe even better yet, a picture of you holding it. That would be the best. Mm -hmm right now for you so this is your finished fettuccine alfredo you can take a screenshot of that right there if you want um send you a photo of this for yes yeah, yeah i don't know i i i'm kind of old school i don't know how to do it because i'm on i'm on a computer but oh, no worries, no worries. but guys please follow him on social media we have in the show notes which is the description box under youtube the recipe he's going to update it he said we've got all his social media handles so you can follow him and this is this has been wonderful. I love watching you cook. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you so much for having you, me on the show. It means a lot. Oh my God, are you kidding? This is I want to be the Don King of vegan. I want to promote every before I die every single person out there that's got something to say that's vegan. So yes, it's it's my pleasure. No, so Colleen says, why didn't you go to cooking if that's his passion? Because I don't think he needs culinary school. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, she said, why didn't he go to school for cooking if that's his passion? And I said, because I think he just as intuitively knows how to cook. I We don't wanna mess him up. <laughs> Basically, cause I found my passion uh, after college. So I pretty much, I went to school, you know, like all of us kids do. We don't really know what we're doing. We're just like trying to pick the best major you know, off of a piece of paper and you're just like trying to figure out what you're doing with your life. And like, so basically, uh, graduated college while I was in college, you know, I went vegan. And then from there, my passion for cooking, I found and, uh, started doing it after work. Like I go to my nine to five, you know, grind all day, come back to the house and it's time to cook. And then I got to do the dishes and then it all repeats the next day. So that's how I, found my passion for cooking. And so I never really had the chance to go to culinary school because I just wasn't really aware of, you know, what I wanted to do. I, I wasn't aware that cooking was my passion yet. Uh, but yeah, I don't think anyone needs culinary school. I think it's overrated. I think people that are graduates of culinary school and literally I'm like, like no offense, but like, I'm not impressed like with what they're cooking. And so I'm like, I don't also, like, I don't care if anyone's been to culinary school because it's like, uh, it's almost like uh, you have, you're just learning one perspective of cooking. So if you go to culinary school, well, I'm sorry, you have different courses. So you're learning from different teachers, but like you're learning that school's take on cooking. And so if you want a more unbiased or uh, almost uh, just more comprehensive uh, cooking, like you want to learn cooking more comprehensively, then I recommend the internet. It's all there. Just, just go find it, you know, uh, start learning different dishes, how chefs make them, um, you know, watch chef AJ's show, you know, she's got all ty types of people on there. Uh, you know, um, you know, I'm cooking up a storm on my channel. You can always check my stuff out for inf inspiration. Uh, you know, the, Cooking is something you can learn by watching and practicing. So that goes yeah. for a lot of things in life. I mean, it's not like medical school. Like I wouldn't want to go to a doctor that probably didn't go to medical school, but for cooking. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm not going to get a surgery from a guy that learned it on YouTube. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> but yeah, but you cook from the heart and, and, and you, you obviously cook intuitively. So like I went to culinary school and I'm not sure that you would pick much up from there, you know. 
Oh, really? You went to culinary school? Oh, yeah. 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 And so, it, you know, it's just, it, this was, I don't know if I did. I mean, it was a good experience and I'm glad I did it. I, you yeah. know, but, but I don't think, like you said, I don't think you need it really. It's that's yeah. when, when you, if you ever did want to be in a restaurant, you apply for a job by doing a test meal. So like, they don't really look at your resume. Like it's different. Like I said, being a doctor, like that's important that you went to school, but for cooking, it's about the product. And obviously, you know what you're doing and it looks amazing. And Mary says, please have him back. Well. I'll talk to you about coming back. I'm booking for uh, for Maine right now. So maybe you'll come back with a, maybe you'll do the Kung Pao or something like that oil free for us. Okay. Okay. I can look into that. Uh, the Kung Pao. Um, let me, let me do my, uh, do my due diligence, do my research. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it could be something else, but we'll do, we'll just, we'll do like a global theme, you know, we'll do a different, uh, different net. We did Italian this time. We'll do maybe some Asian next time. Hey, that sounds great. You want me to try this real quick on camera? Show you, betcha. you betcha. You betcha. One second, here we grab a spoon, a fork. So, Stacy, and those of you watching on Facebook, you always get the recipe on YouTube. I really prefer if you would watch on YouTube because it doesn't always work on Facebook, the streaming, but it always works on YouTube and the recipe's there. Yes, absolutely. All right, y'all, get you a bite of this right here oil free fettuccine Alfredo. All right, let's get right into this. I'm excited, Chef AJ. Are you excited? I wish I could taste it with you. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could let you have a bite of this right here, and everyone watching, because I can't wait to taste this. Got some of that fettuccine Alfredo. Let's start with that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's so unfair. <laughs> I'm sorry to do it to you. I'm sorry. This is probably torture for those that are hungry right now. But right here, we got that blackened oyster mushroom get you a bite of this right here wow you could do a mukbang now and people are asking if you could show a vegan pad thai do you have a vegan pad thai on your channel chef aj i'm glad you asked because i got a great vegan pad thai it's the best vegan pad thai on youtube and well I don't want to say that. I don't know if you have one on your channel so i'm not trying to i, I well I, I have one by chef eric lachesser so Okay, awesome. Well, it's a great vegan pad thai recipe. It's on my channel. Uh, it's uh, able to be made oil free and I use tamarind. So tamarind is an excellent fruit for digestion. It has tons of health benefits, packed with antioxidants. Tamarind is an incredible for thousands of years and it has a great flavor and it's what gives pad thai its sour flavor. Now you, you add some sweetness, so use your favorite sweetener i usually use maple syrup uh and then and you could probably even use dates if you want it and then um yeah my recipe is able to be made oil free um and it is an authentic pad thai recipe so some of the ingredients might be somewhat foreign to some people but if you just use what you got that's my philosophy you know what i mean just make it don't let not having all the perfect ingredients stop you from making a dish so that's uh that's on my channel, delicious pad thai recipe. I do it with tofu. There is some vegan shrimp in my recipe. It's like uh, plant-based shrimp that I get at the Asian supermarket. You don't have to include that, they're not healthy. I just do it really to, um, almost to cater to, you know, most people in this world are not vegan. And so what I do is I show them the exact recipe, how it would be made by a meat eater, and then I make it 100% vegan so that they, are they're seeing something familiar it looks tasty and then they try it and they're like oh my god it's delicious i can maybe go plant-based i could try this i could go vegan you know what i mean so well there is definitely a need for that and i appreciate it and i also appreciate that you're willing to take the recipes and also modify them for those of us that are oil free that's what i love about you that i'm, I'm happy to do it chef aj mm -hmm. and you know what oil free is a way to go for longevity and optimal health so our number one killer, heart disease, number two killer, cancer. And then, you know, if you want to avoid these chronic diseases, then basically an epidemic in America and other developed countries, you can't eat like everybody else. And if you do, you're going to get those same diseases that everybody else has. So eliminating oil, eating whole foods, unprocessed foods, plant-based. When you go to the supermarket, buy the most great,
dark leafy greens you can find and just get as many as you can in a day. And uh, berries, you know, these are the healthiest fruits on the planet. Um, and just eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, grains, ne uh, nuts, seeds, legumes, um, uh, and, you know, mushrooms, stuff like that. And I promise that it will pay off in the long run. You guys can see Chef AJ. She's youthful. You know what I'm saying? She eats healthy. She eats clean. She's lean. You know what I'm saying? She fits in her clothes and she feels good. And that's, that's why, you, uh, you know, this lifestyle is so great because look what I'm eating. You know what I'm saying? Look what I'm eating here. This is delicious. Like, but you're getting all these benefits and it's like, it's not hurting your body. It's healing it. Uh, and it's giving your body the proper fuel it needs. So yeah. That's well, you need, you need to get a t-shirt with your, with your name on it, eat more plants and then underneath and fit into your pants. <laughs> I love that. Merch is I, on the way. <laughs> I, I love that you said, uh, don't let not having an ingredient stop you from making a recipe. Absolutely not. Cause the more reps you get in the kitchen, better chef you'll be, the better cook you'll be. You don't even have to be a chef, the better cook you'll be. We all want to eat tasty food. That's a fact. And, you know, with the pandemic and everything going on and, uh, you know, eating at home is, is almost a safer option. It's a safer option for a lot of people right now. And, uh, you know, we don't want to have to order in something from have oil and sugar and salt and grease. And so, yeah, learning, investing your time into making more flavorful food at home is one of the best time you can ever make because, because of this, look what I mean. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm loving this, you know what I mean? And whenever I get to eat this good, I want to be back in the kitchen tomorrow, finding the next flavor, finding the next dish, making it vegan, inspiring my friends. It's a team effort. We all got to, not one of us can like veganize every dish. That's my goal. It's going to take me a while. So we all got to work together and like we veganize everything. Then they see how healthy we are. Then they see, you know, everyone seeing us as an example and they're, they're inspired by it. And I think that's the best way to kind of get people to adopt a plant-based lifestyle is really, you know, be that shining example rather than, you know, pushing, uh, force of like forcing your beliefs on people. It's more like lead by example. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Well, we need to let more people know about you. That's why I do this show. So thank you so much, Dawson, for your beautiful presentation. It was so great meeting you. Definitely, we'd love you to come back with another one of your great presentations. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fun culinary demo with Karen Ramsey, who's going to be making a spicy cauliflower rice. Enjoy your lunch, Dawson. Will do, Chef AJ. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on the show. It means a lot. I'd be happy to do it again. And you guys, do me a favor, go check out my channel. Sorry for the plug, Chef AJ. I'm an upcoming YouTuber. I'm trying to do this, you know, as a career one day. It mean a lot to me if you go check out my channel. Maybe hit that subscribe button. I got uh, tons of oil-free recipes on the way. You guys, subscribe to Chef AJ, AJ's channel right now if you're just tuning in for the first time. Um, you know, like I said, we're all in this together. It's a movement, and they're not. no one's going to stop this. This is the future right here, plant-based food, right? Well, here. I know you're on your way up. So just remember me when I'm on my way down. <laughs> I got you. Take well, care. I, I won't forget you, Chef AJ. You're the true OG. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are just, you're amazing. Take Thank care, you. Dawson, and everyone.